Mike Alcoholic. Hey, so, um, when I think about holidays, I think about a topic that's, you know, uplifting, you know? I think if, if we're all sitting here and we're in a meeting on a holiday, the folks that are in this room are probably pretty safe. From my experience, holidays have a special sway for us and a special reason for me to go get drunk. Today, it's changed it to, I know where I'm going to go to a meeting on a holiday. Uh, so it's good news that we're all here, and it says something about every single person's recovery that's sitting in this room because this is a holiday, and we're in here because we could find an excuse to not come. Uh, what I like about the topic, and I would like to tie something to Labor Day at least, uh, it's 163 in the big book where it talks about to duplicate with such backing what we have accomplished here is only a matter of willingness, patience, and labor. And I think that's important. I come in here with some willingness, but how often when I came in here I'd have willingness, but somewhere between uh, when I got in treatment and when I got out, somebody just shared it, where did my willingness go? Um, but you know what? On a daily basis, if I keep doing these things, I can maintain that same willingness and move through life in recovery. And I can begin to have a past in recovery of successes that flies in the face of the past of the past of failures. Because even though Henry Ford in our book talks about my past is my only asset, you know what, I can only live on the meat of failures for so long. I need to have some recovery, and I need to show myself with my actions in my life, with God's help and the steps, that recovery can change my life and turn it around. Because it's only until things in life start getting better in recovery, and I can really see that this program works, that my recovery really begins to mean something to me. Because when I have these things that have come about as a result of recovery, I'm less liable to just throw them away. The first time my parents bought me a little bicycle, I left it out in the rain. But the first time I had an ownership interest in that bike or put some money to get that bike, I shined it up just like I do my, my bigger bicycle that I have outside. I make sure I keep that thing clean. You know why? Because I played a part in getting it. Nothing that was ever given to me free I really cared about. But when it talked about willingness, patience, and labor, and when I put that labor into my recovery and I get a good life, I'm less liable to throw it away. When I think about that one part of the topic uh, where it talked about self-knowledge, you know, I think about how often that word is misunderstood in our way of life. Uh, I've heard people say that self-knowledge means how well somebody knows the big book. I've heard people say self-knowledge means how well I've learned, learned about myself because I went to a head shrinker, a psychologist. I've heard people talk about self-knowledge means how many degrees someone has. But I like that page 7 that he read off of because Bill defines self-knowledge, and I really need to know this. He defines self-knowledge in a very specific way. He talks about self-knowledge is nothing more than understanding the first step and going no farther. And I think if you ask anybody in recovery, hey, what if I just did the first step and didn't go any farther? Would that avail me anything? I don't think you'd find anybody that would say, oh, sure, that's going to avail you all kinds of stuff. But we get into this self-knowledge, it can get confusing. So what did he say? The doctor invited me to see my incredible behavior in the face of a desperate desire to stop was explained. This was it, self-knowledge. So I need to really learn from that and learn what self-knowledge is and learn what the warning he was giving me is. He says, hey, if you understand that, that you have, like I have, the, the, the mental obsession, and then once I start drinking, I get the phenomenon of craving, and somehow there's a, 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 a seemingly a comfort that comes from at least I know what's killing me, uh, and I say, oh, at least I know, just like Bill said. Oh, you know, this was it, self-knowledge. I'll just be on guard like Fred and Jim later on in the story. That's why those stories are there, to give real examples of what they thought. Because, see, Bill and Bob came to them two cats and said, hey, well, this is how we drink. And they say, hey, that's me. And then they said, thanks for the information. We'll holler at you. And they went off and got drunk and realized that self-knowledge, just understanding the first step, is not enough. That's why I need the rest of these steps to place me in a position to where I was talking about that quote later in the book where it talks about to duplicate the, what, with what they did, which means to duplicate solving the drink problem, being recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Having God have my, have my sanity restored, meaning I don't believe the lie that I can drink or use without harm. Those are all things that are possible. If you're new, 
and you're sitting here, maybe you're new, maybe you've got 30 days, you're wondering if you have what it takes, I'm here to say that I know for a fact you're no different than me. You have what it takes, but it's going to take some willingness. It's going to take some patience because it's going to be on God's time, not mine. And I understand about getting impatient, but it's going to take a labor. And let's talk about what labor is it going to take. It's going to take a fraction of the labor that it took staying out there, okay? It takes, and what did Dr. Bob say in his story? He said, if you put half the zeal into this, then you put into your drinking, your Heavenly Father won't let you down. I'm saying it don't even take half the effort to stay here for a lifetime. If I put just minimal effort and do basic things, if you're new and you're in this room, I'm talking to the choir, right? If you're in this room on a holiday, I'm talking to the choir. I need to be talking to some folks that are in real trouble because I figure every single person in here on a holiday meeting, you ain't drinking today, just like me. And you know what? How good that feels, the comfort that comes from the feeling of knowing that I'm safe for a day. You know what? Safe and protected. I think that's what Bill talks about. That's the good news about this program. Not talking about bitter morasses of self-pity and, and all of that negative stuff I heard in the topic. Well, I heard one sentence at the end that was good news. I was thinking, man, this is a holiday. This is There's newcomers in here. Let's talk about some uplifting, positive, life is good stuff. Because that's what life is about in recovery. Not remorsefully mumbling about describing the walls of the ditch that I was living in forever. I'm talking about describing what life is out outside the ditch and how I stay outside there. I've had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps and I'll pass.